All right, I'm back, and I know why there was an error. What we have to do is we have to open up a terminal, and I want you to run this command in the terminal. I have already ran it, so I'm not going to repeat it. But it's going to be sudo space apt dash get space install space virtualbox dash dkms. I guess the, the um, you need the other DKMS is, is not for the actual virtual uh, box DKMS. And then when you hit enter, it's going to ask for your password again, the same one you use, of course, when you install Linux. And then when I do it, it's going to say it's already been done. See? It's already the newest version. But yours will go through a whole process, and when it asks you questions and it says click yes to continue, just hit yes. There's going to be one error warning. Don't even worry about it. And when it's done, now we're going to be able to do the install. Because we're going to type in VirtualBox again. Because you remember that error I had. And now look what happens. Okay, remember we got to this part, and when I hit start, we got the error. Now it's okay. Just keep hitting okay. Alright, it's looking for a boot device. I haven't really uh, give, uh, assigned it one. It didn't ask this time, so what we're going to do is we're going to power off the machine. I'm going to delete this. And now we're going to start over. You're going to hit new again, like I told you. Next. Give it the name. Remember I said Windows 7 64-bit? See how it automatically changes? Before we search for it, but it also automatically... Uh, change it for you. You hit next. And then I gave it what? 2048. Create a new disk. Virtual disk. Dynamically allocated. And I want to make this one 75 again. 75 gigabytes. You are going to create a new virtual box with the following parameters location if the above settings are, are correct hit the create button okay now we're ready to start again uh, next now now it's going to do it correctly see now it's asking for the hard drive I mean I'm sorry not the hard drive it's asking for the uh, Windows 7 software I put it in my Blu-ray drive, so you got to make sure you highlight the right one. You're going to get that F12 boot error like we had earlier. Now you hit start. And now the uh, my uh, DVD-ROM is starting to flicker. You're going to hit don't show me again. Just don't, don't click in here when it's just blank. Wait until you get something, uh, you know, something to click on. Because it might make your mouse disappear. Okay, I'm going to take you through the few initial installation steps, and then when we're done, I want to pause it until it's completely installed, and then I want to show you how to share a folder, because that's very important. There's two more things that's going to be required. Okay, see everything is all set. You hit next, you hit install. Okay, while it goes through the install process, I want to pause it. It's going to ask you the basic questions. You'll know how to fill it out. Um, they're very explicit on what questions to ask. If any of you installed Windows 7 before, you'll see it's no different. Just hit Accept. Next. Choose Custom, not Upgrade. And this is the hard disk. This is the one we created. And here we go. The installation is on, uh, is on Ford. So I'm going to uh, pause the video and we'll continue after Windows 7 has been installed. All right, we're back with the next step. As you see, um, when it gets to this point, all you got to do is give it your username, which is going to be just my first name. That's what I use. I'm, um, should I add a password or not? If I do, I'll just make it the same as before. Retype the password. And then a hint, short. 
then you hit next. And I don't want a password, so I'm not going to put any. I just want it to boot straight in there. And then the product key, I'm going to pause it again because I don't want anybody to see my product key. It might be meaningless, but you never know. All right, now under uh, recommended settings, just choose use recommended settings, the regular local time, home network. If you're at home, use home network. If you're at work, use work. You know, you get the idea. Okay, it's going to be a few minutes longer as it's uh, finalizing the setup, so I'm going to pause the video again and uh, continue when we're completely installed. Okay, as you can see, Windows 7 has been installed. At this point, if you like, you could either um, enter your, uh, your security information or you could do the updates. Right now it's saying that I don't have network access. So one way to cure that is to come down here, see where the two bars are, network adapters, right click on it. I have NAT installed right now and sometimes it works fine, sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't work what you gotta do is change it to the bridge adapter and a lot of times that fixes the problem. Hit OK and we'll see what happens. Just give it a couple of minutes and see if it loads in. It's kind of funny when it installs because sometimes it does do it, sometimes it doesn't. And we'll do the home network thing again. This is going to be network 2. Hit close. Okay, now we have internet access. So what you could do is just go to all programs select update and once the first updates are complete see this whole window right here this will be completely filled with with um it'd be completely filled with uh the window so you have the full screen of it it won't be just this little square like you see here but i'm not going to do the updates at this moment what we have to do next is we have to go to devices and you have to install guest editions because it's going to be important to share a, um, a uh, folder with Linux. You wish to download the CD image from the internet? Yes. Are you sure you want to download the virtual box CD image? Yes. Okay, while well, it's downloading, in Linux Mint 14 you won't have this problem because they've already included the download, but here I guess it has to take it an extra step further. Okay, now you want to mount it. And you should get a little window that pops up to install. Just give it a couple of minutes. What I want to do is I want to hit pause again, and once it's installed, it will continue. Okay, here it is. No, I don't. No need to uh, pause. Okay, here it says Run Windows Bo VBox Edition ZXE. This will pop up directly in Linux Mint 14. But you saw we had to make that extra step here on Ubuntu. Just hit yes. Just stick with the defaults, install, always trust from Oracle, of course. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video until it's done. Okay, I guess it is done. Now we're going to reboot it. 
it's not going to reboot your computer, it's going to reboot Windows. Just the Windows part of it. Because what you have to do, you have to select a designated folder to share with Linux. I'm going to show you where the guest editions are. Okay, when you open up Windows Explorer, 